god. Pants' pajamas finally uploaded! It's been so long! I can't wait to see what it's about! Don't leave, I can explain! Hey there, bedheads, it's PJ, and this probably feels a lot different than what most people are used to. I'm obviously not using the best mic or throwing on the best visuals. I'm not even recording multiple takes, to be honest, I'm kinda just going for it. But this is just something that I wanted to create with the start of the new year, and something that I felt I needed to be honest about before I continued creating content anymore. Being a YouTube creator really worsened my health. Now, I won't sit here and act like being a YouTuber is inherently something that is gonna ruin you and that you should never do it, nor am I gonna be dramatic and be like, YouTube is a pathetic garbage platform that took everything from me and it can suck my because no, that's dumb. I'm just saying that being a YouTuber, or more specifically being an animated storytime channel, is just really physically taxing on me specifically. For those unfamiliar, hey, I'm PJ, and I have a lot of health issues. The main offenders being PCOS, GERD, and tendinitis in every limb, which is all just a fancy way of saying I am constantly in pain. And to top it off, my mental health is, pardon my French, a pile of sh <laughs> I'm pretty much having to look into an OCD diagnosis because my anxiety is thoroughly violating my brain. And sadly, being a YouTuber is only exacerbating all of these issues. To be fair, I've always been sick, just as I've always teetered on being poor, but neither reason was ever the motivator for me becoming a YouTuber. I just did it because I didn't really have anything else going on in my life at the time. I had been kicked out of college and no jobs would accept me when I applied. Even the ones that I got through knowing the right people who promised they'd hire me didn't pan out. In fact, pretty much everything I tried just hit a wall. And while YouTube could have been a tool I used to dig my way around, I really only pursued it for the sake of entertaining my mind while I looked into solutions that would better my life. But of course, to my surprise, YouTube went well. This literal spur of the moment thing that I pursued with hardly any motivation at all led me to getting a monthly income. I hit over 100k subs. Heck, I got over half a million. I met the most diverse group of people. I went to places I had never been. YouTube is what gave me my daily meals, my wardrobe, my cat, my apartment, my life. And I was grateful. I, I still am. But every cloud has its silver lining, and mine was becoming unavoidable. YouTube was doing great, but because I never went into it with the pursuit of achieving greatness, the dilemma became, how do I keep that greatness going? And in trying to find the answer, I set the standard up so high for myself that I couldn't reach it. Every time I tried to do more, and every time I got discouraged when I felt the numbers didn't properly reflect the effort. I know people don't know me for my animation or crisp audio. They like how I tell stories in length and how well I can draw, which is wonderful, but when you're just one person, making all those pretty long videos can be exhausting and does require a lot of effort. As one person, I was having to type out four to five pages of script per video all alone, three hours later of trying to record the right takes, and I'm weeping as I spend the next three days editing that audio down to a comprehensible 11 minutes, and you have no clue how long it takes to translate even 11 minutes of audio into art. For you, it's an 11 minute viewing. For me, it's a whole month and a half of grinding because of the amount of images it takes to fill up even one minute of time. Every day, I was slumped over the same tablet on a broken up chair with a janky office computer, wondering if I should quit while pushing through image after image, while battling aches, illness, and the deterioration of my own joy, because despite my YouTube success, I still wasn't making enough money to hire a proper team to help me, nor could I afford to replace my equipment. It was just work, 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 and FYI, when you go that hard, eventually 
least something has to give, and that something is almost always going to be you! I didn't actually get tendonitis pains in my arms before. I only got them when I started doing YouTube. I was drawing so much that I was making my muscles inflamed and experiencing chronic pain every single day, morning to night, fearing that I wouldn't be able to continue drawing or using my hands, period, if the pain got severe enough. Over the last two years alone, I've had to wear a shoulder sling, elbow brace, wrist brace, and a thumb brace due to how my pain has spread and developed from overwork. I didn't used to have to wear braces at all. Then again, I didn't have a lot of the problems I currently have, but with enough physical and mental stress, you have to understand that your body eventually just gives up. It was hitting a point where my mind was rejecting work. It knew that it was unhealthy and didn't want my body to keep going, but I had to because I knew if I didn't that my views would plummet and my audience would understandably leave. However, the reverse was also true. I would really, really want to work mentally, but my body would hurt so much that it couldn't function well enough to draw. Makes sense that I only managed to upload one time this year because, let's be real, my 2020 was crapping so hard on my health. To keep it short, from what I can recall this past year, I had two specialists and a chiropractor for my muscles. I got really ill for an entire month and thought I caught COVID. My tooth cracked open, my stress acid flared up, even my glasses broke. Also, hi, present PJ here to say that I wrote this script like two weeks ago and I drew all the visuals that you're seeing in those two weeks and, and just as I finished importing the images and was about to record, my power went out and my tooth broke again. I am literally recording this video, feeling my cracked tooth scrape my mouth as I speak. You know, people say you need to suffer for your art to be better, and you know, if that's true, I must be f***ing Picasso! <laughs> Yet despite all that, I couldn't stop thinking about YouTube the entire time. Because yes, doing it alone was hurting me, but doing it at all was the only thing keeping my life sustainable. It's the only work my body can currently do to earn money, which I need for bills and medication. I was so stuck. YouTube felt good for me, but also felt bad. YouTube is connected to my business, but my business also doesn't supply much money. It still gives me enough to survive, but what good is life if you're only surviving through it? I don't want to simply survive anymore. I I've done that my entire life, okay? That's the entire point. I want to live. And maybe that part is melodramatic and stupid and sounds like a bunch of pointless whining from another big privileged YouTuber, but it's also genuinely what I feel and it's what's happening to me and my body in real life. And I would just rather admit that finally, instead of forcing everyone to wonder why I'm always gone for months between uploads. With that said, the simple truth is Things are not always okay with me. They're never as okay as I'd like to claim them to be, and having the relationship I personally have with YouTube makes me feel less okay. So what's it all mean for me? For the channel? I honestly didn't know what conclusion I'd come up with by the time I finished this video. I've gone back and forth with it so much over the past few weeks, like I would literally keep rewriting the ending of the script over and over because I didn't know how I felt. But I think I know now. And I still love YouTube. I know, the masochism is so real. <laughs> But seriously, I, I do. I, I love it. I love the people I know. I love creating. I love creating this video even. Like, I, I was hurting throughout the whole thing and yet I loved it more than I thought I would. And I don't want to quit. I mean, I'm hardly in a position to quit anyway, but I genuinely don't want to yet. I still have stories to tell. I still want to make people laugh. 
I, I want to hit one mil. I, I know I probably won't, but I can dream. 2023 is going to be a challenge, but I want to make up for all the lost time and learn to approach YouTube in a healthier way. I need to accept that I created a lot of the problems I am currently facing because I went into this whole thing so unprepared. And I think by acknowledging that, I can take hold of everything responsibly. I'll manage my money, purchase things to improve my workflow, maybe even snag a secondary job to properly hire a team. Obviously, I can't go on doing YouTube forever, but just for a little while longer, I really want to do my channel the right way and enjoy it to its fullest. So to answer the question, no, I don't quit. Just please don't quit on me either, bedheads. Anyway, happy new year, good night, sleep tight, and don't forget to follow your dreams. Also, I'm so glad to stop recording, my tooth freaking hurts. Ah!